Never worry about passing another nursing school exam ever again. Head over to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube to join for free. Simple steps to place an IV. First, gather all your supplies, then wash your hands. Soap and water is always the best choice. Position the arm and identify the vein, then put on your gloves. Open the supplies and prep them. And a really big tip, for easier insertion, loosen the catheter from the needle. Now apply the tourniquet and then clean the patient's skin with an alcohol wipe and let it dry. While holding the skin taut, insert the needle bevel end up inside the vein at a 30 degree angle. Advance the needle until you see a flash of blood. Guide the catheter into the vein. Now once the catheter is inserted fully, release the tourniquet, retract the needle completely, and hold firm pressure on the tip of the catheter so there's no blood backflowing. Connect the extension tubing and flush to ensure you're in the vein. Clamp the extension tubing with saline in the line, then place tagoderm or tape over the IV site to secure it. Dispose of the needle in the sharps container. And those are the simple steps to place an IV. Let's review the different types of IV tubing. Primary tubing is longer and holds greater volume, about 50 to 100 mLs, and connects directly to the client's IV access. It has a spike and a drip chamber and a bag check valve, two injection ports, a slider, and a roller clamp. When hanging secondary fluids, primary fluids get placed on plastic hanger, which then hangs from the IV pole to ensure that it hangs lower than the secondary fluid. Now, secondary tubing connects to the top of the primary tubing, merging the fluids to be infused via the primary line. Secondary tubing is shorter and will have a drip chamber, a roller clamp, and will not usually have an injection port. IV piggyback tubing is used for low and slow volume administration of intermittent medications. Now, IV piggyback fluid must always be checked for compatibility with the primary fluid as it's connected to the primary line below the primary drip chamber through the injection port. Let's review IV tubing changing. So perform hand hygiene, then don gloves. If the IV is on a pump, pause the pump and use the roller clamp on the old tubing to close it off. Spike the new bag of fluids with the new IV tubing and prime the tubing. Don't forget to close the roller clamp or things will get wet and wild. Now hold pressure right above the IV catheter to prevent the backflow of blood. Disconnect the old tubing and quickly connect the new tubing directly to the IV access point. To attach the priming tubing, use an alcohol swab and scrub vigorously. Then connect the primary tubing and unclamp the roller clamp and resume the infusion. Looking to cut your study time in half? Head on over to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube. You can sign up for free and get access to all of this.